So hi everyone, this is ECU Boot and today we're going to be talking about the overall of the N20 engines which is running on the BMW 528i F10. The BMW N20 is a 2.0 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder DOHC petrol engines with variable valve lift and uh, variable valve timing which replaced the N52 and was produced from 2011 to, uh, to 2017 by BMW. Although the N20 is a uh, four-cylinder engine, it is considered a replacement for a naturally aspirated six-cylinder N N52 because its power equivalent models producing similar horsepower to the N53, which create a low RPM torque and better efficiency. Fact of the matter is, the N20 is very commonly wide used engines by BMW everywhere from the X1, the X3, the X4. And we have the three series F30, F31, and also the uh, F34 GT, the five series F10, and literally the list goes on and on and on. This engine was used in a ton of different BMW vehicles, and we're gonna talk about some of the things today. We're gonna start with probably the most distinguished from older engines, that is uh, the Vatronic. As older engines, the Vatronic servo motors will be situated at the top of the engines, but with the N20 engines, the motor will be located inside the cylinder head, so it idles. The intake valves only opens a tiny bit, but in the full throttle, the intake valve will open all the way. This is the uh, Vatronic motors, and through one gear, it can turn the Vatronic shaft. On the Vatronic shaft, there are loops that control the amount of uh, intake valves are being opened. At the end of the shaft, there is a position sensor that registers the position of the uh, Valtronic shaft. Now when you hit the uh, throttle and the shaft doesn't reach its desired position, it will flag a full coat onto our scanners. The next thing that I need to mention is the uh, turbocharger. As older models, the turbo will be operated by the flap actuator, but with the, this uh, N20 engines, it starts to use the electric turbocharger. So this is the motor and uh, there's three common failures of really any turbo say it's the two most common and there's the other one that's source of either self-induced or accidentally induced lubrication problem which is probably the most common way that a turbo fails an internal wastegate failure issues which is which if the uh, wastegate fails the turbo will never build smooth or it could potentially overboost if it's stuck shut versus stuck open it really depends on that situations and the other issues is overspeeding of the turbo itself. These things are designed for specific operating windows. So you know something simple as you uh, turn the car to uh, basically overboost from what it was originally intended for. That could cause excessive force on turbo that could result a um, premature wear and eventual failure. But that could be either a mechanical related problem. Something else is happening that caused that or it could be tuned and that was uh, intentionally done but for most situations you're usually gonna find that it's a lubrication problem and that is particularly an issue when you're working with that so we're gonna move on from the daunting subjects of the uh, turbo charge and all that related problems that are known about the N20 engines we're going to start talking about some of the uh, more common men and things like the water pump on these engines the water pump is an electric water pump these, uh, well, you know, we have a couple of cars that we've done. I was of uh, 100,000 kilometers are still in the factory water pump, which is pretty amazing. These electric water pumps are relatively reliable. They very rarely have any types of uh, external leaks. Usually when they fail, there's a bunch of full coats that will be stored on a DME. The other indications that your water pump has failed is your polar fan for the radiator is going to be on full high all the time. And you also get warning on the instrument cluster telling you that the vehicle is starting to overheat. More times than not, unless you have a uh, serious coolant leaks, it's the water pump that's failed. So just take care of, the, of it and you, won't be, and you won't have to worry about it again for a long period of time. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention and once again is about the turbocharger. So with this N20 engines, it is uh, using a twin scroll exhaust turbocharger. The designation twin scroll denotes an exhaust turbocharger with a twin scroll turbine housing. In this way, the exhaust gas from two cylinders in each case is routed separately to the turbine. In the N20 engines, 
Sinner 1 and 4 and Sinner 2 and 3 are brought together. In this way, so-called pulse charging is used to create effect. So two principles of force inductions are used in engines with exhaust turbochargers are pressure and pulse charging. The pressure charging means that the pressure ahead of a turbine is approximately constant. The energy which drives the exhaust turbocharger is obtained from the pressure difference before and after the turbine. In the case of pulse charging, the pressure before the turbine is high speed and greatly fluctuating or pulsating by the discharge of the exhaust gas from the combustion chamber. The pressure increase results in a pressure wave which strikes the turbine. In this case, the kinetic energy of the exhaust gas is used, whereby the pressure waves drive the turbocharger. So pulse charging provides for a fast response by the turbocharger, especially at low speed, because pulsation is at its strongest here. Whereas in the case of pressure charging in the pressure difference between before and after the turbine is still low. In actual fact, both principles are always used in exhaust turbocharger in passenger car engines. Uh, the proportions of pulse charging is higher or lower depending on the size factors, the exhaust ports, guides, and the number of cylinders. So last but not least, we're going to end up with uh, probably the most debated, uh, most commonly discussed things about the N20 engines, which is, uh, well, timing component. BMW actually recently issued not a recall, but basically they're willing to pay for anybody who has a timing chain replacement done on their vehicle, because it's such a uh, common problem. Pretty much what you're going to see is the plastic guide. Well, they do wear over time and they do break. But uh, the guys are really not the problems. The problem is the chain itself actually elongating and uh, the tensioner itself. Uh, this is the uh, hydraulic style tensioner, so it uses oil pressure. You know, once this tensioner has gone all the way to pick off the slack from the chain, it cannot do anything else. The chain is going to make a lot of noise inside the timing cover. And if you have a ton of wear on the timing chain itself, where the uh, individual links, the pins that hold the links together, are all worn out. The risk is that the uh, timing chain will break. The timing chain break is an interference engine. You're going to have a uh, valve to piston contact and now you're looking at a much bigger repair. So these engines are notoriously noisy anyway between the lift the sound and the injector noise. But the timing chain being extremely loose inside the timing cover will make a uh, very distinct sound. So we've talked about a lot of different topics involving maintenance and the things to expect when owning a N20 engines. A lot of maintenance and a lot of things that you're going to deal with when owning one of these car up is just really basic maintenance. Sure, some of the stuff will might, uh, might be a little bit more difficult to access depending on the platform and depending on how the engine is installed. But for the most part, these are really easy engines to work on. There's a lot of space in the engine bay because of how compact the engine is, so that's kind of a bonus. And to be honest with you, you know the fuel economy, the performance you get out of the engines uh, is really pretty good. So realistically speaking, don't be afraid of the N20 engines. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the videos. I hope you learned a lot of, uh, about the N20 engines. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and we'll help you as much as we could. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you for the next one.